Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode 13 of The Beginner Build, a series where I document my training leading up to my first marathon in Manchester. Now, if I can figure out how to do it, I'll link the series playlist in the description below so you can catch up on everything that's happened in the last 12 episodes. Today's video is going to be slightly different and it's going to be a little more stripped back as I want to go through my race plan for the 2024 Manchester Marathon. I've broken the race plan down into different segments, which should appear somewhere on the screen now so you can hopefully get a better understanding of how I actually plan to run this race. Oh, need to play the title sequence. So I received my bib number in the post the other day. Here it is in all of its glory. And along with that, I found out I was gonna be in the green starting corral, which I believe is the fourth or fifth wave of runners to set off after the elites. So the elite runners start the race at nine o'clock in the morning, and then my pack doesn't actually set off until 9.40 a.m. In the past, Manchester Marathon has started at eight o'clock in the morning, which would have been a massive disadvantage to me, given the fact that I've done all of my training runs at about nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. So thankfully the start time might actually play into my hands and my body's used to running at nine, 9.30 in the morning. So fingers crossed, it shouldn't be too much of a shock to the system. Now, the only annoying thing about being in the green starting corral is I only have a three hour 30 pacer within my pack and that's kind of my own fault. When I signed up for this marathon back in April 2023, I was nowhere near as optimistic as I am now when it comes to my target time, and therefore I only put in a time of three hours and 30 minutes. So it kind of makes sense why I've been put in this pack, but my C goal for the race is three hours 30, so as long as this pacer stays behind me, will have a productive day. I really don't know what to expect going into this marathon and therefore setting goals for this race has actually been quite challenging. When I used to compete in national level trampoline competitions, I could almost predict what the outcome of a competition was going to be based on how my training had gone leading up to that comp. Whereas with running a marathon, I have literally no baseline to compare it to and therefore I don't actually know how prepared I am based off how my training's gone. So starting with my C goal, which I briefly mentioned a second ago, I want my time to be anywhere under three hours and 30 minutes, which would be a pace of 8.01 per mile or 4.58 per kilometer. Now, truthfully, I know this goal is super achievable, but that's kind of meant to be the point. I want my C goal to basically be a fail safe for if everything else on the day goes completely wrong, so I can still walk away with a positive outcome and something to be happy with when finishing my first marathon. Now, my B goal for the race is sub 3.15, which would be a pace of about 7.25 per mile or 4.36 per kilometer. This is the slower end of what my training block has been building towards and therefore this should still be possible with all the preparation that I've put in. The reason why I've set this as my B goal will become clearer in a second but I genuinely think that it is still more than achievable on the day even if a few things go wrong. And then the main A goal for my first ever marathon is to come in with a time under 3 hours and 12 minutes. Now to say that out loud is actually kind of daunting as that's the top end of my training plan predictions but that's also kind of motivating in the same way. And the fact that I don't have a 315 pacer within my pack means to achieve this goal, it will quite literally be down to my self-discipline and my self-pacing abilities. In terms of pacing the actual marathon to achieve these goals, I'm actually going to try and run a pretty stereotypical marathon by trying to run a negative split. I need to look at my notes for this part as this is where it kind of gets a bit technical. So mile one to five, I'm going to try and ease myself in and aim to run an average pace of 7.25 per mile or 4.36 per kilometer. Hopefully this should help me get into the rhythm of running at marathon pace and should also help me shake off any start line nerves that I probably still have. And trust me, there's going to be a few of them. From there, mile six through to 23, I'm going to try and hit a consistent pace of seven minutes 20 per mile. This is a pace I've been really comfortable with in training and is a pace I know my body can hold for this length of time. And then the final 3.2 miles of the 
marathon is going to be a full send to try and get under that desired 312 time. The pace here is probably going to be somewhere between 7 to 7.05 per mile, but if my body allows me to go faster than that, I'm obviously going to let it. Now, if I find any of these paces too hard throughout the marathon, I'm going to try and drop back down to the opening pace of 7.25 per mile, as this will still put me on target to hit my B goal of 3 hours and 15 minutes. Smart. I spoke about fueling in the last episode of this series and it's something that I'm pretty confident I've got down to a T. So the day before the race, my first main aim is to take on more electrolytes. Now this is probably going to be in the form of either my bulk electrolyte powder that I've taken for this entire marathon training block or the cis energy tabs that also come in clutch. And then along with this, three proper meals throughout the day with my dinner being a mainly carb based meal to ensure I have the most energy possible come race morning. I'm going to try and keep race morning as close to my training as possible and with that it means my breakfast is probably going to consist of either bananas or bagels. These are two foods which I know won't upset my stomach and also aren't that heavy on my digestive system so I probably won't need to go for a poo as desperately. And then 30 minutes before I start the race I will take either a high five or a cis energy gel based on how I'm feeling. Just as a quick note, none of the gels I take will have caffeine in them because the last time I took a caffeine gel, it didn't end well for me, my digestive system or the toilet. Now I've spoken about this strategy before, but during the race, I'm going to take a gel at mile five, nine, 13, 17, and 21. These are more than likely all going to be the high five energy gels that I've been using in training, but I do know that there are cyst gels throughout the course and I've used them as well and they work fine on my stomach. So if it's more convenient to snag one of them, I'll probably do that. Hopefully this keeps my carb stores topped up and gives me all the energy I need to finish strong and actually finish the marathon, not feeling like I'm going to die of starvation. Right, shoe choice. Obviously, it's going to be my Alphafly 3s. I quite literally bought these shoes with the intention of wearing them to run the Manchester Marathon, and therefore I would be an absolute idiot if I didn't choose to run it in them. I've used these shoes for a fair few sessions within my training block, and I even wore them for my tune-up race at the Leicester 10K a couple of weeks ago. Personally, I love how they feel to run in, and I know a lot of people find them too narrow, or they leave them with arch blisters, but I've never had any of those issues, and and that's why it makes for my ideal race day shoe. And then as a backup pair of shoes, I'm actually going to be taking my newly acquired Vaporfly 3s just in case anything happens and I need to have a second pair of shoes. I don't really see a situation where I'm going to need to wear these, but I also don't want to be the person that rocks up to a marathon without a spare pair of shoes. Also, whilst we're on the topic, I want to say a massive thank you to Pro Direct Running for sending these shoes out to me. They are a dream to run in and have quite literally been the cherry on top for the final weeks of my marathon training. As we're on the topic of race day attire, on my bottom half, I'm going to be wearing my Pure Sport half tights. They've got three super deep pockets which comfortably fit all five of my energy gels in and they get rid of all my quad chafing issues which makes running in them an absolute dream, especially over 26.2 miles. Now, depending on the weather, I may layer my Nike trail shorts over the top. This is purely a preference thing as it does give me a few more pockets to store my gels in but realistically I don't actually need to wear them. Top half plan is to wear my NN running vest that I got a couple of months ago but of course running in a running vest is completely weather dependent. As a backup I'll take a short and a long sleeve training t-shirt just in case it's either too cold or it's chucking it down with rain. But also I bought the NN running vest purely for this race. So chances are, I'll be wearing it for this race. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed. Watch of choice is going to be the Apple Watch Ultra Generation 1. It's never failed me in training, the GPS is solid, and the battery life is an absolute dream. So it's a pretty obvious choice if you ask me. And my GoPro. So, you know, you guys can actually see the run. Now I don't actually know if I'm going to carry this for the entire race. My first plan was to pass this off to one of my family members at about mile eight, but who knows? 
Maybe, maybe I will carry it for the whole thing. Actually, if you've made it this far in the video, your comment is so much more valid. So if you want me to carry this for the entire 26.2 miles, let me know. Yeah. I mean, I guess it would make for a much better race recap video. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, and then how could I forget my go faster sunglasses? I think that that's pretty much all bases covered for my race plan. I've actually just bamboozled all of you. I've just filmed that entire video whilst it was daylight. But it looks like it was not nighttime, but like evening time. YouTube magic. <laughs>